Hello, ladies. How are you? Good morning. Happy Monday. I'm not sure about you, but every day is pretty much the same for me. <laughs> I even worked on the weekend. So let me know if you worked on the weekend too. But today we are going to chat about goal setting and the wheel of life. So I'm not sure if you've done the wheel of life before or you know what it is, but we're going to dive deep. And this is going to help you to really connect to your values as well as your help you with goal setting as you move forward into the week, the year, and however you want to use it. So I'm just going to wait for some people to hop on. I see some people watching. If you are here and watching live, if you can put a comment in the comment box so that I know it is working properly. And then we are going to get started. Good morning, ladies. If you are joining me this morning, I also want you to get a piece of paper and a pen because we're gonna have a little workshop. I really prefer the workshop format. So all you're gonna need, paper and a pen and your head and your heart. Uh, so if you can comment in the chat box, I want to make sure everything is working so you ladies can ask questions as we go along because I really want today to be very interactive as we go through our goals and wheel of life. I'm just going to type in the chat box. Hey, ladies. Oh, there we go. Working. Yes, Kathleen. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get started. And so I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen. And we're going to chat about wheel of life and goal setting because I really want to help you to set goals, to set yourself up for success while in quarantine and when we get out of quarantine. So it's really important to think about things like values and look at all areas of our life, which is why we're going to integrate the wheel of life. And one of my mentors, Lisa Garber, taught me to do this when doing my workshops and my goal setting. So I'm passing that information on to you. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you about what are your core values as a human? What is really important to you? And I want you to write those down. It's okay if you feel like you don't know because you're gonna get more information as we go through this workshop. But I'll give you some of mine to kind of start your brain working. So some of my core values are freedom. It's really important for me to create something I'm proud of, to be of service and make a difference, teach, educate, help others. It's really important, my spirituality is also really important to me. It's important for me to surrender to connect to myself, have good routines and prayer and, and movement. Movement and health is also really important to me. So think about some things that are really important to you because this is gonna help you as we build out our wheel of life and also hopefully give you some aha moments when you're building it and we continue to dive deeper. Okay, so that's our first step is I want you to write your values. We can go back to this. The next step is we're gonna start going through the wheel of life. So I want you to grab your piece of paper and a pen, and I want you to draw a big circle. Oh, love it when you ladies share. Okay, so we have some other uh, people coming in to talk about, oh, so awesome, their values, earth care. Yes, that is really awesome. Life practices. Thank you for sharing, Grace. If you ladies want to share your values in there as well, then you can hopefully also share and and learn from one another. So maybe someone else will have something that you really like and you can kind of take it as well. Uh, love, positivity, spirituality, love it. Perfect ladies, thank you so much for sharing. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the wheel of life. So I want you to draw a big circle and this visual isn't necessary, but it's, but it's important. So draw a big circle and then I want you to put a T in the center of the circle. So it's basically gonna look like a pizza with four sections. Once you have that, I want you to draw another line through the T and then another line the other way so that your pizza has two, four, six, eight slices, okay? Bringing us back to a little elementary school days with the pizza slices. Um, okay, so you have your eight slices. In each slice, I want you to put the following topic. 
So one slice is going to be business and contribution. The next slice is going to be, I keep saying slice. We're going to use this pizza analogy the whole way through. The next one is finances. Then we move on to health. And then the fourth is family, friends, and social. The fifth is romance. The sixth is personal growth and spirituality. The seventh is physical environment. And the eighth is fun and recreation. Okay? So now you've labeled all eight sections of your wheel of life. These eight sections reflect the eight areas of your life. So we're going to dive into each one of those. And again, because we're virtual, I like to do a little bit more discussion normally in this. So but we're going to go through it pretty quickly. So if you need to watch back this video, pause it and go through it again, then do that. If you want to do this with a group of friends and or anyone that you're living with right now, that would be fun too. Okay. So Oh, awesome. Grace put it in there. So yes, business contribution, finance, health, family, friends, social, romance, growth, spirituality, physical environment, fun and recreation. Thanks, Grace. It is all there. So once you label each section, I'm going to explain a little bit further how we're going to use this wheel. So at the center of the wheel is a zero. And at the top of the wheel is a 10. So I want, let's focus on this 10 right now. So I want you to quickly jot out the pieces. We're gonna go through each individually. And I want you to really envision, what does a 10 look like for me in this area? So we're gonna think big first, where I really want you to get connected to your ideal life in each one of these eight sections. So number one, what does business and contribution and look like in your life out of 10? What, and I want you to focus on feelings and you can set, I, uh, okay, <laughs> I'm getting a little tongue tied right here. I want you to focus on feelings and how you want to feel and be in each of these areas. Sometimes we get to, oh, great question. So what does a 10 feel like to me? So the reason I want you to focus on feeling is because often when people go through this, they focus too much on the goals and then it it's harder to do the goal setting part later. And so it's really important to connect. Even if you are a believer in manifestations and law of attraction, it's really important for you to connect to the feeling of what a 10 looks like in business. So business could be, and that's why I include contribution here. I want to help. I want to others to be impacted by my teaching, my product, my service. I want to feel like I matter. I want to feel like I'm building a community. I want to feel like I'm creating something that matters whatever that is. So I want you to go through, and again, because this is just a mini online workshop, I want you to go through all of them and you might have to do a little bit on your own. So I've, you can see in my journal, I did mine here. So we're going to go through career, business contribution first. Then you're going to go through your finances and really look at what does a 10 feel like? Finances, trust, faith, flow, <laughs> manifestation is dangerous law of attraction extra. Yeah, it can be very much so. And I actually agree with you. I've done lots of workshops on it. Um, that's for another, uh, another discussion, but connecting to the feeling of what you are looking for will help you to set your goals better. Okay. So finances, do you want to ease flow like VIP five star, not have to worry about money, really thinking about how you want it to feel and how you want to live in that section. Then we go into friends, family, and social life. What do you want that to look like? Health, wellness, physical environment, romance, personal growth, fun and recreation. So you're going to go through all of those sections. 
I'm trying to figure out if people are actually doing this. Are you ladies doing this along with me? Should I be pausing right now? And or are you making notes and you're gonna come back to it? Because I wanna make sure I'm facilitating this properly because I normally just go through all of this and we share as we go along. Grace, Kathleen, are you still with me? Okay, so you're gonna go through all of those sections. Now, once you go through all of those sections and you really comfortably know what a 10 looks like for you right now, and I say right now because it's important to continuously go back to this wheel of life so that you can reevaluate, set more goals, see how things are changing in your life. So we do have some people that are doing this along with us. So I'm gonna give you some space right now and do it quickly. I want it to be very top of mind. You can dig a little bit deeper into each one of them a little bit later. Okay. And the reason why fun and recreation is so important is because it's something that we forget a lot and is almost the most important. When our fun and recreation is really strong, we're often happier people. Just a little note. Okay, so once you have all of your 10 really identified, I want you to go back to the wheel of life. And I want you to think, okay, now that I've done the visual of where I wanna go, what my 10s look like in each area of my life, I'm gonna essentially grade myself in each of these areas. So in each slice of the pizza, I want you to write a number. If 10 was the ideal of what you just wrote, where are you right now? Are you at a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? 10? So I want you to write the number that you are currently at in each of those sections. This is fun. Okay. And we'll go through it. So, and you can share ladies as we go along. Business and contribution. What number are you at right now? If 10 is your ideal, what are you living right now? And then go along and go into finances, friends and family, health and wellness. Feel free to share any of your numbers in the comments if you are with me. Okay, so once you've written out all of your numbers for here and now, awesome. So Kathleen's at a seven for her career and keep going around. I want you to do it really fast with me right now. You can go deeper into this a little bit later but I wanna make sure we get through everything while we're on our mini training this morning. And so what you're gonna have is a bunch of numbers in your pizza. Now, what I want you to do, and this part is, you know, is good for people who are creative and are visual. So what I want you to do is I want you to draw a line in that pizza that represents with the number. So for example, if it was a 10, you're right at the top. If it was a nine, you're just below. If you're a one or a three, you're closer to the zero, which is at the center. So I'm just gonna paint a little picture for you. I'm just gonna draw something very fast. Okay, so we have, okay, so if this is your pizza, you know, very artistic. This is zero, this is 10. So let's say at the top, you are an eight, here you're a four, here you're a 10, here you're a one, here you're a six, here you are, I don't know, a seven, a nine, um, a four. Okay, so you can see how you have then all those lines around the, the, the wheel of life. So the reason why it's called the wheel of life is because you can see how unbalanced this wheel is. So technically this wheel doesn't actually make a, a circle. 
it would be a pretty wobbly wheel if you had to bike on that. Do you see? It's not actually a wheel. And so there are some imbalances in our life. And when I've done this workshop, and even when I've taken this workshop, I often think, what's better? To have everything at a four, to have everything at a nine, or to have some imbalance to get us to a 10? And really, I don't think there's a right answer. I think that's up to you to figure out where your passions, your values lie, and what your goals are to keep everything the same or to just continue growing and developing as you get to attend. And for me, I do the latter because I find at some points in my life, some things are more important to me. So sometimes my health and wellness is more important, my physical environment is more important, my friends and family, and sometimes they aren't, and that's okay. We have to really honor where we're at in life because if you're really focusing on your career or you're really focusing on your family, other parts within the wheel may may not get as much attention during that time and that's okay. But doing this will really help you to set those goals and also see where are there any lack, where is there any lack and or unintentional gaps in my life and my goals right now. Okay. So now that you have that little visual, you can kind of see where things are at. Ladies, in the comments, if you are still with me, can you let me know what is your top and what is your lowest section? So when I did this, my top were career, personal growth, and my lowest was actually friends and family because that wasn't a focus at that time and my social life, maybe now it's the same because we're in quarantine, but at that point I was really focusing on my business and my job and so I was okay to sacrifice some of my social life because I was still connecting with some of my important friends and, and that was good for me at that time and that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna go into this next section. So once you have your wheel of life, what I want you to do is I want you to, again, we're gonna go through all of the sections individually. And I want you to write a note to yourself and I want you to ask yourself this question. What would it look like for me to increase this number by one? We don't have to worry about bringing a three to a 10 or um, a two to a 10 or even a seven to a 10. We just have to worry about and think about how do we get a seven to an eight? How do we get a three to a four? How do we get a two to two a three? So we just want to get it up one number. So now we're going to go through each section again, and this is going to be our foundation for our goal setting. So business and contribution, how do you bring it up one number and or how do you strengthen it if it's already a 10? Finances, I know someone had mentioned before that their finances were the lowest. So how do you just bring your finances up one number? Health and wellness, bring it up one number. Family, friends, and social, bring it up one number. Romance, one number. Personal growth and spirituality, just one number. Fun and recreation, one number. Physical environment, just one number. And so I want you to go through that and think about how can I increase this number just by one? What would that look like? And this might take some time. Again, I've done hours of work on this wheel of life and really going through, okay, what does this look like for me? So even in career, I'll go through some of mine while you ladies are writing. So in career at that time, how to bring it up one number and strengthen it was really to integrate more prayer and intention and affirmations into my business life. Finances were to find a mentor and a role model that could help me along the way. Friends and family were to work. Actually, I integrated some personal development into that into this, and it was to allow to allow people to live their own journey and to allow people to do their own thing and light an intention candle 
about the people around me. Health and wellness was to wake up early, um, move more, work out. So I did get a little, in some areas I did put a couple um, suggestions. Physical environment was to declutter. Significant other was to, oh, um, stop myself from getting upset and recognizing my triggers better. Personal growth was um, feeling sexy and nurtured and really honing in on my power and trying the power pose affirmation a little bit more. Fun and recreation was to allocate no work time and really make sure I get creativity in my day. So go through and see how can I increase this just by one. Now we're gonna build off of this. So I want you to be really real and I want you to start thinking about, okay, is there one section that I'm drawn to, I'm drawn to work on before the others? Because sometimes we look at this wheel of life and we go, great, I'm gonna try to improve all areas of my life. And that's a good intention, but it's not setting yourself up for success. So normally what I recommend when going through this wheel of life is pick one or two sections only that you're gonna work on to strengthen your routines and patterns in that section so that you can strengthen your goals and then you can move on to another section. So you only have to worry about one or two sections at a time because if you give yourself too many goals, you're gonna set yourself up for success or up for failure, reverse. I want you to set yourself up for success. So I want you to pick one or two sections that you're going to start with when lifting the number just by one. And I want you to be really real and I want you to ask yourself, what is currently getting in your way? Why haven't you already increased this number? What, what has set you up for failure? What are your challenges or obstacles that are not letting you dive deeper and accomplish your goals in this section? Maybe it is... I'll tell you some of mine that I wrote when I did it. Maybe there's some guilt, some pressure on yourself, some internal dialogue or conditioning that you're still living in, your emotional brain, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, so physical and social needs. Maybe you're projecting on others. What other examples? Maybe you are getting caught up in the moment and reacting, not breathing and working through it. Okay, one or two sections. Start with the most difficult. That is totally up to you, Diana. It really depends on what's a priority to you right now. If I would recommend if you were going to start with one, if I'm being honest, fun and recreation might be one of them. Because like I had mentioned before, Fun and recreation is often one that we don't focus on and will bring you the most amount of joy. But just pick whatever one you want. You can start with the hardest. You can start with the easiest, whatever you want. Again, I want you, when you say most difficult, I do have some more questions about that because I don't want you to not stick to the goals that you set for yourself and then feel like you're a failure and then get totally demotivated to do the others. So for talking motivation, maybe start with the easiest, but I also want to make sure that you're setting your goals to all be easy, <laughs> even in a difficult section. So if you're finding that the section is really difficult and we're going to get to this next, be very careful about how you set the goal. Okay, and we'll talk more about that. So really just be real about yourself of what is getting in your way and why you haven't accomplished that goal in that area to date. It's important to know what is going to stop you when building your goals. What has stopped you before? Lack of motivation. Um, what else? Friends and family, routines, work. What has stopped you from raising this number in the past? Because that's the thing with goals. We always go to them. And a lot of times people go back to their goals and they think nothing changed this past year. And I worked so hard on setting my goals and nothing changed. So pick one or two sections. 
Now what I want you to do is really think about, okay, what goal can I set that will bring me up just one number? So I'll give you an example. If you in health and well, in health and wellness, fitness, whatever, you want to run a marathon. <laughs> that is even to say I'm going to run every day. That's a really big goal that you may not even do. And let you I want you to be really real with yourself when setting these goals. What is feasible? Is it feasible to move every day? Then you can choose move, walk, run. Maybe your first goal is actually to find a workout partner to help you so that you can keep each other accountable. I want you to really start small with your goals so that you can actually get to the next step and really break down your goals. Because if you want to run a marathon, you have to start walking first and maybe you need a partner. Maybe you need to set up some routines to make sure that you're active every day. Maybe putting out your gym clothes, maybe sleeping in your gym clothes. There's lots of little things you can do to get you there. I also want to make sure you're circling back to the beginning of this workshop when we talked about values. Do your goals in those sections align with your values? If you're saying that you want to buy a mansion and be a millionaire, but in your values, you talked about environment and being a minimalist, a lot of times we set ourselves up for failure because our goals don't reflect our values and our goals are coming from a place of should and things that we think we have to do and they're not really connecting to our values and the truth of who we are and what's important to us. So circle back to your values and make sure they're still connecting. And then think about what are my next steps to get me there and how do I start small? How do I set myself up for success so I'm going one day at a time? I also want you to think about your why. And this connects also back to your values. Why do you want to increase this by one? Why is it this important to you? Why is this goal important to you? Because let's say weight. Weight is often a, a, a very common one in health. Maybe you're not feeling great. I really want you to connect to your why of why you want change. Why do you want to eat better? Why do you want to move more? You know, sometimes for physical appearance doesn't do it. It won't keep you connected to your goals. I really want you to dig deeper into the why because I don't feel good about myself, because I don't feel confident, because when I show up into a boardroom, I am self-conscious and think everyone is looking at me because I don't have sexual attraction to my partner anymore and I don't want to be physical because I want my children to look up to me and own their body and their health. I want to be a good example for the people around me. I really want you to connect to your why and why this goal is important to you or else you're going to give up and it's not connecting to the right thing within your soul. Does this make sense? Okay. And what you can do is you can go through all of the sections and do this and you can just pick one thing at a time. You can go back to this wheel of life every week. You can go back to it every couple of months, once a year to really connect to your goals in all areas of your life. So I'm going to finish up this little training. This is really difficult to do virtual because I normally do this in person and it's super fun to hear everybody's, everybody's goals and then we can really workshop them. Does anyone want to share their goals that they've come up with as we've gone through this wheel of life? And it might give us an opportunity to workshop a goal right now live. And if not, that's okay too. You can keep it to yourself and or you can send me a DM and I can help you if you're struggling a little bit in, in making your goals. But the making your goals part is really important so that you can actually achieve it and succeed. So let me know in the comments if you're still with me and you got some goals out of that. 
go back to the wheel of life, dig deep. Maybe that's your journaling work for tonight. Move and be more active. Yeah, that's awesome. And so being more specific, is there a time during the day that you want to move? What's going to help you move and be more active? Are you going to set a time? Are you going to stop work at five so that you can move and be more active? There are certain uh, routines and guidelines that you might want to set in your life to be to move more and be more active. What does that mean? I'm going to walk. I'm going to I want you to be specific in how you can make that happen so that you can actually set those goals and and do them every day. Lifestyle, having a routine. Great. So if you want to have a routine, I would write out what are little things that you can do to have a routine in your morning, in your day, in your evening, and really carve out what those routines will look like and the timing of those routines in your life. Morning. Okay, awesome. Alrighty, ladies, thanks for sharing. I'm going to finish up this mini training and workshop. I hope you have fun diving deeper and journaling and, and working on this. If you've seen the Wheel of Life before, I hope it was a good refresher. I love it. And tomorrow will we, we will be back with business. I also want to give you a heads up. This is going to be the last week that I'm going to be doing daily training. So I'm going to move training to once a week. I know I've been giving you a lot of content, but what I'm going to do is we'll do a once a week training and we'll make it a little bit longer. And then I'll tell you ahead of time what the training is going to be about. So you can bring questions and we can all workshop together. And I'm probably going to do it on live next week, but we'll probably move it to Zoom to make it a little bit easier for uh, the technology and the network. So I will see you tomorrow for business day. Let me know if you have any questions and I will chat with you soon. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining. Hello, Courtney, Paige, Diana, Kathleen, and I know Grace um, had commented on the other video. So we will see you soon. If you're just catching this now, there are two parts to this video because our video cut out. So I will see you soon. Bye for now, ladies.